Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My dear students, Assalamu alaikum. I'm going to talk on the physiologic aspect of the thyroid gland, which is uh, very much important and uh, lying in the neck. Well, it's a Ramzan Mubarak. Well, thyroid gland. Let's uh, We'll discuss the outline of the lecture. Well, location, and by this location, it has been called by the apple of the Adams, poem Adami, and uh, in Arabic it's known as Aghuddai Kadamia. Well, location, structural synthesis of the hormones, storage and release, regulation of release, transport, degradation, and mode of actions, these are the uh, uh, headings on which I will be talking. Effects and disorders. Well, location. Thyroid gland is the largest gland in the body, which is located in the neck, inferior to the larynx, spanning over the anterior surface of trachea, just inferior to the thyroid cartilage, Adam's apple, it is known. Thyroid gland is butterfly shaped gland. You're looking here. This is thyroid gland. Well, it's a white box larynx. It's a thyroid gland. This is a thyroid gland. And parathyroid glands, these are embedded on the posterior aspect, the artery and the vein, windpipe, laryngeal nerve, parathyroid glands. Behind the thyroid gland, they're embedded. You must keep in mind regarding its location. Structure consists of right and left cone shaped five into two, three into two centimeter lobes connected by a narrow region of the gland known as isthmus, one into two into 1.2 centimeter. Microscopic thyroid follicles are present which produce thyroid hormone. Yes, you're looking here. This is the thyroid cartilage of the larynx. It is also known as Adam's apple. This is the isthmus, these are the lobes, right lobe, the left lobe and the trachea lying behind. These are the cartilages, C-shaped cartilages of the uh, trachea windpipe. Well, this is the microscopic anatomy, which is uh, known as a histologic features. You're looking here, the follicular cells secrete thyroid hormone, thyroid, these are the thyroid follicles. C cells secrete calcitonin and collide is a glycopro. This is a collide. This is a collide, the gel like material which is uh, present in the center of the follicles, which are lined by the follicular cells. And the you're looking here follicular cells, collide, and these are para follicular cells which produce the calcitonin, well thyroid hormones. The hormones produced and secreted by the thyroid gland, you must keep in mind thyroid gland is a endocrine gland, is a tetralis gland. Thyroxine, T4 or tetraiodothyronine, T3 or triiodothyronine, and the fourth one is calcitonin, third one is a calcitonin. calcitonin. The thyroid gland, the hormones, T4, T3, and calcitonin. Synthesis. The synthesis of the thyroid hormones involves the following steps. Iodide trapping, oxidation of the iodide, organification, and coupling. One thing should be very much clear uh, that uh, the hormone, the yes, the amino acid, which is very much important, in the synthesis of the T3 and T4 is doubtlessly tyrosine, which is also of a certain significance in the formation of a catecholamines, that is the epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Tyrosine has got a significance, it's a raw basic material for the synthesis of the thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormone synthesis and secretion involves process that occurs 
within follicular epithelial cells and in colloids. Thyroglobulin synthesis. Before discussing the steps of formation of the thyroid hormones, let us discuss the synthesis of the thyroglobulin, a heavyweight protein present in the the colloid in the follicles. Thyroglobulin molecule is a large glycoprotein containing 140 molecules of amino acid tyrosine, endoplasmic reticulum, and Golgi apparatus in the follicular cells of the thyroid gland synthesize and secrete thyroglobulin continuously. After synthesis, thyroglobulin is stored in the follicle. Well, iodide trapping, which is very much important, by sodium iodide symporter, it's blocked by thiocyanate, perchlorate, and pertechnitrate. Oxidation of the iodide by thyroid peroxidase blocked by the large intake of iodide. When you take a large amount of the iodide, oxidation of iodine is inhibited. That is why in the preparation of the thyroidectomy, we give the large amount of the iodide. Why? To inhibit the oxidation of the iodides, to restrict the formation of the T3 and T4. Thioamides refer to the hyperthyroidism therapy. Organification, tyrosine residues of thyroglobulin are iodinated, leading to production of the monoiodotyrosine mid residues and diiodotyrosine dit residues, inhibited by large intake of iodide more than 150 microgram per day. Thioamides refer to the hyper thyroidism therapy. Yes, you're looking here, coupling. Did plus mate give to T3 diiodotyrosine plus monoiodotyrosine that give the T3 triiodotyronine. Did plus mate, that's a did plus did, that give the T4. It has been uh, mistyping over here. Please keep in mind, did plus did. Again, you are looking here, this is a cell, how the ordination and coupling takes place. This is how Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, tyrosine is coming, mid and data form, then the proteases and how the T3 and T4 they are being secreted, collide droplets and mid and dit T3 and T4 they are taken by the this and pinocytosis. You are looking here, this is the coupling and manufacturing of the T3 and T4 by these cells which is lining the follicles. Well, the iodination process, thyroxine and its precursors. Thyroid hormones are made from thyroxine and iodides. These are the precursors. You are looking here, tyrosine and iodine, they form thyroxine. Tyrosine plus iodine, it also from triiodothyronine. Triiodothyronine, Yamper, as you see, two tyrosine, Yamper, two tyrosine, that gives rise to thyroxine and triiodothyronine. Storage entries. These hormones are stored along with thyroglobulin, a large weight protein released in walls falling steps. Thyroid epithelial cells ingest iodinated thyroglobulin from apical surface, endocytosis. Collide filled endosomes fuse with lysosome that contain hydrolytic enzymes that digest the iodinated thyroglobulin. Free thyroid hormone diffuses across the basolateral epithelial membrane into ECF, extracellular fluid, blood. Free thyroid hormone quickly bound to carrier proteins to be transported and release the thyroid itself. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim The second sitting of the thyroid gland, 
you are looking here to what happens the iodinated thyroglobulin is taken by the endocytosis into the follicular cells and now this sort of a vacuole or uh, the uh, sort of a granules this combines with the lysosome now the degrading enzymes come and they cause the degradation of the iodinated thyroglobulin into T3 and T4 which are being released here to the extracellular fluid in the blood. Regulation, thyroid hormone are released from the thyroid under the control of the thyroid stimulating hormone TSH. TSH is secreted by the anterior pituitary gland and is itself under the control of the thyrotropin releasing hormone. TRH is secreted by the hypothalamus. You should, this is known as an axis. The hormone from the hypothalamus because hypothalamus is that part of the brain which has got a, a neuroendocrine function as well. All the stimulating hormones, all the releasing hormones, they are being secreted from the hypothalamus. Now TRH is secreted by the hypothalamus. Control of the thyroid hormone secretion is a negative feedback loop. Binding of the TSH on thyroid epithelia enhances all the processes for hormone synthesis of iodide transporter, thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin formation. This happens when? When the TSH come and attaches on the thyroid epithelial cells. You are looking here. Magnitude of the TSH thyroid stimulating hormone signal sets the rates of endocytosis of the colloid. TSH foster rates of the colloid synthesis hence more hormone in circulation and if TSH is decreased, decrease in the colloid synthesis, hence less hormone in circulation. You are looking here, the cold exposure can increase TRH, release, enhance thyroid hormone release. Here you can this is the thyroid hormones axis. Hypothalamus produce TRH, comes and effects on the thyrotrop cells of the pituitary gland, produce TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone acts on the follicular cells of the thyroid gland it will cause the iodination the entrance of the thyroglobulin into the follicular cells and also the enhancement of all the function result will be formation of t3 and t4 and calcitonin if what is the feedback if t3 and t4 in the concentration the normal concentration ko exceed kar jati hai so this will set a signal, this will set a message to two places, hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Kya? Ke please down produce TRH and down produce TSH. Why? Because we are already in plenty. We are already in a plentiful condition. So this is known as a feedback. Product zyada ho gai, to unki jo mother product hai, ya stimulator hai, trigger hai, this is the negative feedback. Transport of the thyroid hormone. T3 and T4 are highly bound to plasma protein carriers. And plasma protein carriers ke saath milayas liye jata hai unki activity ko control karne ke liye. Taake aise hi inki activity jo hai wo na ho only on the time of a need. Jab need ho to phir. Phir kya hota hai? They are released. Free hai, and then they are taken by the target cells and they show their metabolic processes. Major carrier is a thyroxine binding globulin, TPG. This level bhi dekha jata hai for the uh, function of the thyroid gland. Secondary carriers are the albumin and thyroxine binding pre-albumin. Approximately 99% of T4 bound and less than 0.1% is free hormone. T3 free in plasma less than 1% more active than T4. And you remember that T4 will be active hone ke liye, pehle T3 may metabolically change hona padega, and then it will be performing its function. Because of a tight binding to plasma protein has a long half-life T4 7 days. 7 days. Free hormone is what is captured by the target cells and exerts its biological effect before degradation. 
increase. See here, increase what happens in pregnancy and decrease in the liver disease in circulating plasma. TBG level change the amount of the TBG bound hormones. TBG level that increases in the pregnancy. When pregnancy will increase, hoga to goya, hormone will be more and more in the bound form. When bound form will increase, it means free hormone will be less available. However, they only transiently affect the amount of biologically active free hormone because the negative feedback of free hormone on TSH level. Remember, TSH stimulates release of the free hormone. Yaad rakhein, thyroid stimulating hormone ka ek ye bhi function hai ke wo release karta hai free hormone ko for the possibility of its function. In pregnancy, a fall in T3 level causes a compensatory increase in TSH level. Ye negative feedback hai that in turn will increase production of the free hormone in the circulation. Increased thyroid hormone shuts off TSH but total free hormone may be higher. Degradation, let's see. These steps occur in peripheral tissues, the iodination and the carboxylation, glucoronidation and sulfonation in liver. Excretion into bile ducts, excretion of glucuronide conjugate in the urine. You are looking here, well, I just revised you. This is the peripheral, this is the cells, follicle cells and how it happens thyroglobulin कहाँ बनी endoplasmic reticulum में ये secrete हुई बाहर आ गई यहाँ पर iodination हुई फिर again it has been taken into inside by the endocytosis proteolysis हुआ thyroxine triiodothenone release हो गया in the blood यहाँ पर penetrin एक supporter है जो iodine को भी लेता है और sodium को भी लेता है this is the supporter for sodium and iodine. Now the iodine is being taken. Now it comes attached to the pantherine or it's called bahir pantherine which is thyroglobulin ke saath attached karke, oxidation karke, iodination karke a conjugate protein banati hai. Yes. Thyroxine T3 to T4. T4 is the dominant secreted circulated form from the thyroid however. Most of the T4 Secreted by the thyroid is metabolized to 3C. Just I have already told you that the metabolic form is T3. Deiodinated at the 5 or 5 position, 5 prime or 5 position in the peripheral tissues to either T3 or R. Reverse T3 inactive. Since T4 is primarily converted to T3, that has a higher affinity for thyroid hormone receptors. Sometimes T4 is considered a pro hormone of that T3. This is a more elaborated ratio of T3 to T4 is 5 to 1 in circulation. Potency of T3 to T3 is 1 to 10. T4 is converted into T3, the active form of the thyroid hormone, by two enzymes called deiodinase. Deiodinase. Yes, deiodinase is a set of enzymes. The deiodinase are uh, selenium containing enzymes that are used for synthesis of the active form of the thyroid hormone T3. The deiodinase also catalyze the inactivation of the various forms of thyroid hormone. There are three types of the deiodinase as follows type 1 deiodinase, type 2 deiodinase, and type 3 deiodinase. You're looking here. What happens? Thyroxine, type 2 deiodinase, kya kar rahe? triiodothyronines. Type 3 deiodinase, you are getting the reverse T3. And the type T3 deiodinase, you are getting the diiodothyronine. This is how the degradation takes place. Bismillah rahman rahim I am talking on the physiology of the thyroid gland and uh, I am talking on the degradation. Now please note it. Drugs that inhibit the deiodinase are as follows. Steroids, beta blockers, thyroamide and amoyodarone. Amiodarone. 
amiodarone. These are the drugs, steroids, atinolol tablets, beta blockers. These are the carbimazole, thioamide, and these are the amidarone, hydrochloride, amidarones. This group four groups are drugs that inhibit the function of the five prime deiodinases. What it happens? It means that they are not going to deiodination. They are not causing deiodination. T3 versus T4. In the comparison, please, please try iodothyronine. 300 more times more active than the T4. The thyroid gland only produces about 10%. T3, the rest is made from the peripheral kidney or the liver conversion from the T4. Only 0.3% is unbound and free for use in the body, stored in the thyroid follicles until needed. Thyroxine, inactive thyroid hormone or pro-hormone, you can say. 80 to 90 percent of the thyroid gland production, most of which is converted into T3. Only 0 0.03 is unbound and free for free use in the body. Can also be converted into reverse T3, which is inactive and stored form of the hormone. This conversion can be seen most often in patients taking too much T4. Ratio of T4 to T3 is 5 into 1 in circulation and potency of the T4 to T3 is 1 to 10 affinity. Mechanism of action. Receptors for thyroid hormone action are intracellular DNA binding proteins. This should be very much known. Receptor for thyroid hormone actions are intracellular DNA binding proteins. Function is a hormone responsive transcription factors. Mode of action is similar to the steroid hormones. T3 binds to a short repetitive sequence of a DNA called thyroid response elements TRE. TRE then DNA sequence that is the AGGTCA. These are the codons can be arranged as direct repeats palindromes or inverted repeats can be monomer agg tca homodimer agg tca an or a heterodimer t4 plus and other protein complex with the retinoic acid receptor and other member of the nuclear receptor subfamily these are the nuclear receptors which are present in the nucleus and by which the action of the T3 and T4 is made possible. Heterodimer is the high affinity form and thought to be the major functional entity. You're looking here. T3 attaches to a special sequence, monodimer, alpha and beta. T3 and T3, well, you're looking here as a homodimer, alpha, 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 beta, alpha, beta. T3, it also heterodimer. This is O they come and attach to DNA sequences. You are looking here, mechanism of action of steroid hormone, this is an other case steroid hormones that comes, receptor proteins, then hormone protein receptor complex and they act on the DNA. The plasma membrane of a target cell. These steroid hormones are how they cause their effects, biological effects, metabolic effects. Steroid hormone come, this is the receptor, key lock position, then it comes here and it attaches to the hormone receptor complex on the DNA. And now as a result of that, messenger RNA is formed, they go into the cytoplasm, then plasma membrane and they cause the various protein formation. See, mechanism of action of the thyroid gland, you are looking here. Thyroid gland, transporter, transporter. These are the cells. Blood mein. and they will be going. Yes, the blood may say Yahase I formation kebad Yahapar I or Yahapar they are coming by the transporters into the cell into cell and then cytoplasm they attaches with various receptors 
and they go into the nucleus where they attach into the DNA and then the messenger RNA comes and which form the various proteins which are the mediators for the action of the thyroid hormones. This is very much complex, you should be knowing. Physiological effects of the thyroid hormones. Effects include increased ATP production, number one, very much important. Increased cellular metabolism, energy utilization and oxygen consumption. Increased body temperature, BMR is increased. Growth and development of skeletal, muscular and nervous system in fetus and children. Systemic effects are as follows on CBS, very much important. Increased heart rate, increased force of cardiac contraction, increased stroke volume, increased cardiac output, upregulation of catecholamine receptors, thyroid gland, thyroid hormones, then while you're looking, inotropy and chronotropy, these are the terms for the force of contraction and for the rate of the heart contraction. Ionotropic effect hai and chronotropic effect hai kiske? Thyroid gland, thyroid hormones ke heart par. You're looking here, cardiac output is increased and stroke volume is increased. Or respiratory system, increase resting respiratory rate, increased minute ventilation, increased ventilatory response to hypercapnia and hypoxia. While kidneys, so looking here, increased blood flow, increased glomerular filtration rate. So looking here, thyroid gland, thyroid hormone, heart, inotropy, chronotropy, increase the cardiac output, blood volume, blood pressure. And if all is increased, then renal blood flow is increased, then sodium reabsorption is increased. GFR is increased and you're looking here, thyroid hormone cause the blood vessels increase the nitric oxide activity, renin angiotensin mechanism. You're looking increased blood flow, increased glomerular filtration rate, nitric oxide which is a vasodilator and systemic vascular resistance. RBCs, oxygen consumption, well increased RBC mass increased oxygen dissociation from hemoglobin. Thyroid hormones cause an increase in the oxygen consumption through falling action. Increased mitochondrial size, number and key enzymes. Increased plasma membrane, sodium potassium ATPase activity. Increased futile thermogenic energy cycles. Decreased superoxide dimutase activity. Intermediary metabolism. Increase glucose absorption. Increased glucose absorption from the gastrointestinal tract. Increase carbohydrate, lipid, and protein turnover. Downregulate insulin receptors. Increase substrate availability. Growth and tissue development. Many of the thyroid hormone effects on development are mediated via growth factors including somatomedins, erythropoietin, nerve growth factor and epidermal growth factors. Increased growth and maturation of bone, increased both development by the tooth development and eruption, increased growth and maturation of the epidermis, hair follicles and nails, increased rate and force of skeletal muscle contraction, inhibit synthesis and increased degradation of mucopolysaccharides in subcutaneous tissue. You are looking here. Well, this is the pituitary gland, pituitary. Well, you're looking here how the pituitary, hypothalamus, and the thyroid gland axis and effect on the bone. This is the axis. You're looking here the effect of the thyroid hormones on the bone. TRA1, thyroid hormone receptor alpha. Nervous system critical for normal CNS neuronal development, enhances wakefulness and alertness, enhances memory and learning capacity, required for normal emotional tone, increased speed and amplitude of the peripheral nerve reflexes. Reproductive system, 
required for normal follicular development and ovulation in the female, required for the normal maintenance of the pregnancy, required for normal spermatogenesis in the male. Lipid metabolism, increased thyroid hormone levels stimulate fat mobilization leading to increased concentrations of the fatty acid in plasma. They also enhance oxidation of the fatty acids in many tissues. Finally, plasma concentrations of cholesterol and triglycerides are inversely correlated with thyroid hormone level. One diagnostic indication of the hypothyroidism is increased blood cholesterol concentration. It's very much important. Hypothyroidism ke case mein jo cholesterol hai wo increase kar jayega. And it has been seen ke jab cholesterol increased kar jayega to myocard infarction, ischemic heart disease are seen more in the cases of the hypothyroidism. Why? Because of an increased level of the cholesterol concentration. Carbohydrate metabolism. Thyroid hormones stimulate almost all aspects of the carbohydrate metabolism, including enhancement of insulin-dependent entry of the glucose into cells and increased gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis to generate free glucose. Pregnancy. Normal changes in the thyroid function due to pregnancy include 1a twofold in trays T4 thyroxine binding globulin stimulated by increase in estrogen. Increased level of the TBG decrease, free T4, therefore more TSH is made in turn increasing T3 and T4. Increased amount of the thyroid hormone balance reached at 20 weeks and maintained until parturition. Increased demand for iodine, significant increase in pregnancy, clearance of iodine by kidney and siphoning of the iodine. By fetus from maternal circulation, thyroid stimulation by human chorionic troponin, TSH and human chorionic troponin similar enough that SCG can increase mimics TSH at gland. Receptor stimulate T3 release while TSH may be suppressed. You're looking at the graph. Week of gestation 10, 20, 13, 40. Relative concentration of the TSH looking here. TSH and it's a human chorionic gonadotropin. It has got a relation that well. Some women may develop transient hyperthyroidosis. Some women may develop transient hyperthyroidosis in pregnancy or a woman has subclinical hypothyroidism. The demand of fetus can precipitate hypothyroidism. Disorders. The disorders caused by thyroid deficiency or excess are as follows. Hormone mein bachcho yaad rakhiega either uh, overactivity of the gland ki or underactivity of the which give rise to a disorder. Yani hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. All the glands they have got the disorders. The activity, the disorders caused by thyroid hormone deficiency or excess are as follows. Hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism that is overactive thyroid occurs when you are thyroid gland produces too much of the hormone thyroxine also known as a thyrotoxicosis. It does reflect the meaning of the proverb that is excess of everything is a bad. Grave disease. Most common form of the hyperthyroidism and is an autoimmune disorder. Autoimmune disorder ke baare mein aksar kaha kerta hun is ghar ko aag lag gai ghar ke charag se. जब आपका पालतू कुत्ता आपको काटना शुरू कर दे तो ये ऑटोइम्यून प्रोसेस है तो यही होता है कि इन द केस ऑफ ऑटोइम्यून डिजीजेस दी ओन सेल्स आर एनगल्फ बाय द ओन एंटीजन एंड एंटीबॉडी कॉम्प्लेक्सेस द बीटा सेल प्रोड्यूस एंटीबॉडीज व्हिच आर थायराइड स्टिमुलेटिंग इम्यूनोग्लोबुलिन्स टीएसआई वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट बीटा सेल्स बी सेल्स प्रोड्यूस एंटीबॉडीज which are thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins TSI form against the TSH receptor of the thyroid gland. TSI binds to TSH receptor 
एंड मिमिक एक्शन ऑफ द टी एस एच रिजल्ट अब क्या होगा टी एस एच का वो मिमिक करेंगी एंड वट विल बी हैपनिंग देर विल बी मोर एंड मोर फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द थायरॉइड हॉर्मोन रिजल्ट इन ग्वाइटर ग्वाइटर क्या है एंड लार्ज थायरॉइड ग्लैंड एंड एन इंक्रीज इन द थायरॉइड हॉर्मोन एंड डिक्रीज इन द टी एच एस बिकॉज ऑफ अ नेगेटिव फीडबैक ड्यू टू इंक्रीज थायरॉइड हॉर्मोन इन प्लाज्मा ग्रेव डिजीज ऑल्सो नोन एज अक्सोपथेलमिक ग्वाइटर बिकॉज ऑफ द डिजेनेटिव चेंज इन द एक्सट्रो ऑक्रो मसल्स रिजल्टिंग फ्रॉम द ऑटोमिन रिएक्शन यस यू आर लुकिंग हेयर दिस इज द एक्सोपथेलमोस यानी वो जो आंख है वो बाहर निकली हुई है फ्रॉम इट्स ऑर्बेट एंड दिस इज बाय द ऑटोमिन प्रोसेस इन द रिट्रो द रिट्रो ऑर्बिटल टिश्यूज जो हैं उनके अगेंस्ट एंटीबॉडीज बनती हैं जो कि एक्सट्रोक्रो मसल्स को ऑटोमिन प्रोसेस के जरिए कमजोर कर देती हैं डाइजेस्ट कर जाती हैं एंड नो इट हैपन्स टू कम ऑन द फंक्स यस यू आर लुकिंग हेयर दिस इज द रॉबर्ट ग्रेव जी रॉबर्ट जे ग्रेव इन द ऑनर ऑफ विच द डिजीज इज नेम ग्रेव डिजीज इज अ नेम फॉर द डॉक्टर रॉबर्ट जे ग्रेव हु फर्स्ट डिस्क्राइब इट इन अ पेशेंट इन एटीन थ्री फाइव द डिजीज इज ऑल्सो रेफर टू एज बेस्टोज डिजीज नेम्ड आफ्टर जर्मन कैरल एडोल्फ वेन बेस्टो हु डिस्क्राइब द डिजीज इन एटीन फोर्टी ही डिड नॉट नो दैट ग्रेव हैज डिस्क्राइब the same disease just a few years earlier the predicted change in the grave disease are increased metabolic rate heat intolerance and sweating yaad rakhe jo grave disease ka patient hai na wo usko garmi bahut lagegi he won't be tolerating the heat increased appetite but weight loss appetite bhi increase kar gayi bhook bhi lag gayi aur weight loss bhi ho raha hai palpitations and tachycardia nervousness and emotional swings muscle weakness tiredness but in ability to sleep you are looking here the grave disease the exceptional mass goiter arrhythmia and tachycardia in heart nausea and diarrhea oligomenorrhea in female muscle weakness and tremor you are looking here oligomenorrhea is a condition in which female have infrequent menstrual period and small amount of menstrual blood is there Yes, known as oligomenorrhea. Yes, hyperthyroidism due to grave disease. So you're looking here, hypothalamus, TRH, no stimulus, intrafistry, TSH. Now what happens? Thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, the T3 and T4 more, and this causes negative feedback. Now TSH is decreased, and also the TRH is in decreased. so in the cases of the grave disease you will be looking decreased amount of the tsh and also of the trh gestational hyperthyroidism this happens during the pregnancy hyperthyroidism in pregnancy it is a transit form of the thyrotoxicosis caused by excessive stimulation of thyroid gland by the hcg hcg mimic the effect of a tsh and usually limited to the first 12 to 16 weeks of the pregnancy increase risk of preeclampsia preeclampsia mean hypertension in the pregnancy premature labor fetal or pre perinatal death low the low birth weight of the baby baby caused by grave disease Well, I'm talking on the disorders of the thyroid gland, but so uh, the disorder which is uh, now on the screen slide that is the hypothyroidism. That is the under functioning of the thyroid gland. Hypothyroidism, under active thyroid, is a condition in which your thyroid gland does not produce enough of certain crucial hormones. And one of the example is the Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Hashimoto's thyroiditis, autoimmune disorder, destruction of the gland, also called autoimmune thyroiditis. Predicted changes are decreased metabolic rate, cold intolerance and decreased sweating, weight gain, with increased appetite, bradycardia, slowness of speech, thought and movement, lethargy and sleepiness. Yes, you're looking here. 
the what happens in the Hashimoto is an autoimmune disorder that is the most common cause of the hypothyroidism. If it affects women 10 to 15 times more than men, constipation, excessive or prolonged menstrual bleeding, enlargement of the tongue, memory lapses, depression, joint pains and stiffness, goiter and puffy face, brittle nails, muscle aches, weakness, tenderness and stiffness, pale dry skin, enlarged and inflamed underactive thyroid gland. Hashimoto's disease is an autoimmune disease in which the thyroid gland is gradually destroyed. And now when the gland is destroyed, certainly the hormones are not produced. The condition is known as a Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism in fetus and neonates. Fetus is a two potential source of the thyroid hormone. Fetus begins to make T3 and T4 at approximately 12th week of gestation. Sustained transfer of the hormone across the placenta. Placenta has deiodinases that converts T4 to T3. Three forms of the hypothyroidism in pregnancy. Isolated fetal hypothyroidism, isolated maternal hypothyroidism, iodide deficiency combined maternal and fetal hypothyroidism. You're looking here. Yes. Creatinism. This is the hypothyroidism in the children. It is known as a creatinism. Iodide deficiency. It is also known as a congenital iodine deficiency syndrome. It is a medical condition present at birth marked by impaired physical and mental development due to insufficient thyroid hormone hypothyroidism often caused by insufficient dietary iodine during pregnancy. See you are looking here. Signs and symptoms are as follows. Patient is dwarf with severe mental defect, coarse, dry and scaly skin, deficient hair and teeth, retarded skeletal growth, stunted skeletal growth, reduced BMI, cognitive impairment, protuberant abdomen, infertility, impediment in evolution. These are the effects in the, yes, you're looking here, the cretinoids, a child having the cretinism, maternal hypothyroidism, female hypothyroidism frequently associated with infertility. In pregnancy, if pregnancy does occur, there is an increased risk of the fetal death and gestational hypertension. Subclinical maternal hypothyroidism diagnosed retrospectively are two antibodies to the thyroid that can cross placenta. Children with low intelligence quotient scores, they are produced. Fetal hypothyroidism, also known as a sporadic congenital hypothyroidism. Fetal gland does not produce enough hormone. Normal at birth, maternal compensation, need rapid diagnosis shortly after birth or risk. Child having permanent mental and growth retardation. Well, mixed edema. Mixed edema refers to the deposition of the mucopolysaccharides in the dermis, which results in swelling of the affected area. Mixed edema is more common in women than in women man, men. Mixed edema can occur in hyperthyroidism associated with peritibial mixed edema and exophthalmos. Peritibial mixed edema can occur in one to four of the patients with grave disease, a cause of the hyperthyroidism. Hypothyroidism including Hashimoto disease. You're looking here. Mixed edema, though it is known as a, a hypothyroidism of the adults, but associated with the pretibial mixed edema. Pretibial mixed edema and exophthalmos. Pretibial mixed edema can occur in one to four of the patients with grave even. You're looking here. These are the mixed edema. The mucopolysaccharides in the dermis. Hypothyroidism versus the hyperthyroidism. You're looking here. Hypothyroidism, hair loss, inability to think clearly, goiter, reduced heart rate, strong fatigue, sensitivity to cold, dry skin, weight gains, puffiness, memory problem, constipation, irregular menstrual period. Well, the depression, mood swings, joint, muscle pains. 
the the high cholesterol depression mood swings anxiety hair loss bulging eyes goitre enlarged thyroid heart palpitations tremors heat intolerance this is the major uh, slides telling you ke how the hypothyroid can be differentiated by the hyperthyroid on the basis of the clinical presentation though the goitre is in both cases but it will be on the um, radio amino assay of the t3 and t4 level okay, that will tell you hypothyroid along the clinical symptoms which are present clinical symptoms plus the laboratory findings goiter a goiter is a swelling in the neck resulting from an enlarged thyroid gland a goiter can be associated with a thyroid that is not functioning properly worldwide over 90% of the goiter cases are caused by iodine deficiency the term is from the latin goitria meaning throat most goiters are of a benign nature goitria that is the throat yes look looking here this is the goiter the swelling in the entry aspect of the neck goiter can be present both in a hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism with varying symptom goiter in the hyperthyroidism as it was stated in previous slides that in hyperthyroidism for example grave disease the tsi bind to the tsh receptors in the thyroid gland and thus cause an increase in both secretory activity and cell number thus increasing the size leading to goiter and goiter in the hypothyroidism in hypothyroidism there are less t3 and t4 in the circulating blood the hypothalamus senses it and starts releasing trh it acts on the entry pituitary to secrete tsh it acts on the thyroid to increase the secretion of the thyroid hormone causing goiter tsh is released in response to less thyroid hormones in the blood causes of the goiter are as follows iodine deficiency selenium deficiency nodules in the thyroid gland are to aument inflammation tumors benign and malignant signs and symptoms are as follows goiter in the hyperthyroidism tachycardia palpitation nervousness tremor increased blood pressure heat intolerance goiter in the hypothyroidism weight gain despite poor appetite lethargy sus rahega banda cold intolerance and constipation you looking here iodine deficiency causing the goiter you looking here hypothalamus give rise to the trh and tripustry give rise to tsh then t3 and 4 if iodine is inadequate it means t3 and t4 low 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 negative feedback and tripustry excess tsh and there is a hypertrophy of the thyroid gland that causes the the enlarged thyroid gland means the goiter it is by the negative feedback mechanism if the iodine deficiency is there lack of iodide ref interferes with the negative feedback control well calcitonin in previous slides we have seen the detail of the t4 and t3 now we are going to discuss another hormone calcitonin calcitonin is a hormone that is produced in humans by the parafollicular cell commonly known as the c cells of the thyroid gland Calcitonin is involved in helping to regulate levels of calcium and phosphate in the blood opposing the action of the parathyroid hormone this should be well i am talking on the calcitonin though it is produced by the thyroid glands but the cells which are known as the parafollicular cells or c cells one thing is uh, it has got uh, the functions uh, which are entirely different from the t3 and t4 And you're looking here, the principal cells which are lining, well, the follicles, they are the principal cells. Then this is the colloid. Colloid is the gel-like material having the thyroglobulin. And you should be very much clear that uh, T3 and T4. I used to say they are being uh, generated and uh, they are formed in the lab of the thyroglobulin because. that is the ordination is there and then t3 and t4 they are formed in the lab of the thyroglobulin but see there see in this case the these are the parafollicular cells which are produce the calcitonin 
and calcitonin uh, as the name depicts C stands for calcium and C stands for the calcitonin so they have got a relation that calcitonin is responsible for the metabolism of the calcium and phosphate and one should be very much clear it has got entirely different effects than that of the parathyroid hormones PTH parafollicular cells are also known as a C cells yes calcitonin participates in calcium and phosphate metabolism in many ways in counteracts parathyroid hormone and vitamin D more specifically calcitonin lowers the blood calcium in two ways but PTH causes the increase in the blood calcium level well it affects the calcium level in two ways major effect it inhibits the osteoclastic activity in bones which break down the bone it inhibits the osteoclastic activity it means the breakdown of the bone is halted and minor effects it inhibits renal tubular cell resorption of the calcium and phosphate along them to be excreted in the urine you're looking here this is the thyroid gland lobes isthmus calcitonin well is being produced by the parafollicular cells well effects it comes lower calcium level in blood lower calcium level in blood then on the GIT inhibits calcium absorption by the intestines inhibits calcium resorption in the kidney excreted in the urine promotes deposition of calcium into bones inhibits osteoclast and stimulates the osteoblast well this is the this slide is very much uh, elaborative for the function of the calcitonin and you must see it again and again to what are the effects of the calcitonin on the various systems with its organs yes this lecture has been taken by the Gotten and Hall, Guyton and Hall the textbook of medical physiology and then Genong's review of the medical physiology and then the essentials of the medical physiology by professor legendary professors of the physiology who is the teacher of teachers and may God bless him with a long life present in Multan and a great personality so my dear students hope you all understand understood it well and stay blessed and safe thank you very much